Hello everyone, my name is Massimo Pantica, Principal Application Engineer in the Microcontroller team for the Americas region. Before moving deeply with the Secure Manager, let's have a look at the new security features available with the STM32H5. We are not going to cover all the security features of the STM32H5, also because you might be already familiar with the basics of security in our STM32 microcontrollers. But if not, uh, the AN5156 provides a very good summary of possible attacks and device protections for the different STM32 families. You can find the link to this application note and uh, to additional material in the resources section of this presentation. So what are we covering in this presentation is an overview of the new security features introduced with the STM32H5. The STM32U5 introduced the, the new secure AES with, uh, with hardware unique key and the hardware key based readout protection regression. With the new STM32H5, we are introducing now a new temporal isolation level, a new secure storage which is coupled with temporal isolation, new product states, a new debug authentication feature and an embedded secure boot called STIROT. These mechanisms, together with the other STM32 legacy security features, allows your final application to achieve better and higher level of security. Our best-in-class device, in terms of security, is currently the STM32H573. And this is in fact the device we are covering in this workshop. So be aware that uh, there may be uh, variations and reduced security features in other devices of the same family. Just a couple of words on naming convention. We are going to encounter a new terminology which is related to the root of trust. And depending on the owner and on the immutability, uh, you might find STIROT, immutable root of trust from ST, STUROT, updatable root of trust from ST, and OEMIROT, OEMUROT, immutable or updatable root of trust that you can provide yourself using the templates and the examples available within our ST software packages. Okay then, let's start having a look at these new security features. About the temporal isolation mechanism available in the STM32H5, while Trust Zone at runtime allows isolation between the secure and the non-secure areas and code, the temporal isolation on the other end protects the boot code from being re-entered in any other way than by reset. The principle is to isolate the secure boot from the application. The temporal isolation features, called HDP, Secure Hide Protection, applies to the user flash. It's uh, already used in other legacy STM32 families, but has significantly evolved with the STM32H5. The STM32H5 provides, in fact, the possibility to hide up to two different portions of the user flash, while only one single portion has been allowed so far in other STM32's microcontrollers. So, how does this work? First of all, we set the HDP watermarks start and end through the option bytes. At reset, we start executing, let's say, our first stage bootloader code. Then we call a root security service and we close and hide this portion of the user flash. The RS root security service is part of the STROM code and is dedicated to security management. Then the next code execution starts and let's say we are executing our second stage bootloader now and we can set the new HTTP limit through a specific flash register. At this point, we can call again a root security service in order to close and hide this second portion of the flash. 
And now we can start executing the user application without any risks of jumping or accessing to the hidden parts of the user flash. Another new security feature of the STM32H5 is the secure storage, a specific area where data can be provisioned in a secure way and data are isolated and can be accessed only by authorized part of the system. There are five different secure storage areas in the STM32H5 called Secure Storage OB Keys, Option Byte Keys. Each secure storage area and the associated data is isolated through the hide protection mechanism and is optionally encrypted through a mechanism based on the hardware unique key and a 24 bit monotonic counter called Epoch. The OB keys are stored into the system flash of the STM32H5 for a total size of 8 kilobytes and are split in five predefined areas corresponding to the HDP levels 0, 1, 2, 3 secure and 3 non secure. As long as we stay in HDP level 0, full access is granted on the entire secure storage. But once you start moving to the next upper levels of the HDP, the secure stored data associated to the previous HDP levels are not accessible anymore. So if we merge the execution flow and the OB keys data storage areas in a combined view, once we move to the first stage bootloader execution in HDP level 1, the first stage bootloader checks the second stage bootloader integrity and authenticity thanks to keys level 1. Then once we move to HDP level 2 and the second stage bootloader is executed, the first stage bootloader area and keys level 1 are not accessible anymore but keys level 2 can be used in order to check the authenticity of the application, and so forth. To recap, the temporal isolation allows access control to code and data. Code is protected thanks to the hide protection and data is stored within the OB keys secure storage areas and can be wrapped with a derived HUK, which is different for each HDP level, and is based on the HUK and the entire rollback monotonic counter called Epoch. Typical HDP level uh, assignment is level 0 uh, is assigned to the root security services, level 1 to the STI ROT or OEMI ROT, level 2 to the UROT, and level 3 is split in secure and non secure for the application. Another new feature introduced with the STM32H5 is the new product lifecycle based on new product states. From the development phase until the maintenance phase, a product can be configured in the following product states, also called the lifecycle states. Open state, the device is fully open, usually during application development, and if you are familiar with classic uh, readout protection mechanism available in other STM32 families, this is uh, equivalent to RDP level 0. Then we have the provisioning state. In this state, the product can be provisioned, including OB keys and option bytes. I wrote provisioned. I wrote code and data programming are done. Uh, and from now on, the IROT Secure Firmware Update feature can be used to provision the secure and the non-secure application. Then we have Trust Zone Closed. The debug access is uh, available only for non-secure application in HDP level 3. This is uh, equivalent to the redout protection level 0 0.5 that we have in our STM32U5. And then we have the closed state, no debug access either for secure and for non-secure. It's uh, equivalent to the key protected RDP level two. And finally, we have the locked state, 
this state is permanent and the debug is permanently disabled and the debug reopening or regression is not possible anymore. And this is equivalent to the RDP level 2. Associated to the new device lifecycle, we have the new debug authentication features, which allows a trusted debugger to temporarily reopen access without compromising sensitive information and or to manage a partial or full regression. Partial regression corresponds to releasing non-secure code and assets. The non-secure flash code is erased. OBKey in HTTP level 3 non-secure are erased. The epoch non-secure monotonic counter is incremented while the full regression corresponds to releasing all code and assets. In this case, all the user flash code is erased. OBKey for HDP levels 1, 2, 3 secure and 3 non secure are erased. And the epoch secure and epoch non secure monotonic counters are incremented. We'll present later in more details how to configure and how to use the debug authentication feature. The latest new security feature I want to introduce is the STIROT, which targets a CSIP level 3 certified implementation. It is an immutable root of trust from ST. It's stored into the device system flash and provides two main services, secure boot and secure firmware update. The STIROT comes with the following selected configuration ECDSA256 Asymmetric Crypto for Image Authenticity Verification, ASCTR128 Symmetric Crypto for Image Confidentiality, SHA256 for Image Integrity Check, and important to mention, the keys dedicated to authentication and confidentiality are OEM assets and can be customized by the OEM during the provisioning process. Just to recap the Secure Boot definition, the Secure Boot as a root of trust service is an immutable code which is always executed after a system reset. It activates the STM32 runtime protections and then verifies the authenticity and integrity of the next stage, in this case the application code, before executing it. Let's now have a look at the STIROT startup sequence at the reset. Step 1 verify if a valid image needs to be installed. Step 2 decrypt and install the new image. Step 3, verify the authenticity and the integrity of the new installed image. Step 4, jump and execute the firmware application code. Uh, in case of no valid image to install or execute, we might have step 5. This step is optional and can be disabled through the STROT configuration. In this case, a reset is generated instead of jumping to the loader. There are two possible use cases, one single boot stage. In this use case, usually the STIROT is configured to manage only one image, the user application. At reset, the STIROT detects if a new user application is available in the download area, checking authenticity and integrity before installing it in the execution area. Then, after a successful verification, integrity check and authenticity check of the user application in the execution area, the STIROT executes the user application. In the second use case, we have two boot stages, the immutable and the updatable root of trust. The STIROT is configured to manage two images, the UROT code and its associated secret data, such as authentication and the encryption keys. At reset, the STIROT manages the installation of a new UROT image, if any, and after a successful verification of the execution area, integrity and authenticity check, the STIROT executes the UROT. 
At this point, the Eurot is in charge of managing the installation of a new user application, if any. Uh, the Eurot verifies the integrity and authenticity of the application using its own secret keys before executing it. The product provisioning to activate the STIROT boot path follows three steps. Let me mention that ST provides a dedicated tool, the STM32 Trusted Package Creator, to guide the user with image generation and provisioning steps. Configuration templates in XML format, scripts, and how to wiki pages are available to make all the following steps as easy as possible. Step 1 is related to the STIROT configuration. At this stage, the number of images, firmware only or firmware and data, the location of the images and the crypto keys are defined and the OB keys are generated. Step 2 is related to the images generation compatible with the STIROT format which, by the way, is the same as the MCU boot format, if you are familiar with it. In this step, signed and encrypted firmware and data images are generated. In step 3, option bytes, OB keys and images are programmed into the device. Provisioning scripts are provided by ST to guide the user all along the provisioning process, which at the end configures the device in the state selected by the user itself. To recap, in this session we have explored a little bit the new security features introduced with the STM32H5. But again, we just focused on the new security features only while STM32H5 offers a lot of additional security features, as you can see from this list, which we are not covering here because already available in other STM32 families. And so they have been covered in previous workshops and the training material from ST. To close this security introduction, here are some very useful resources in terms of links, videos, and additional documentation that we recommend you have a look at, if not done yet. Let me just show you the STM32H5 security entry point wiki pages. We have two main sections, security features and getting started. And you can see on the left some of the topics we have already covered with this presentation. Also, all the presentations, including this one, are available within the workshop material you already have. Well then, thank you for your attention so far and let's move now to the next session.